recording for this afternoon session. Okay, so uh, in this part of the session, what we're going to do is we're actually going to explore the um, the gallery. And so the gallery, so the, the tools that we're going to show is really on this um, the left side, right? We've got the, the slide panel, but and to, see, to view it, just click, you click on that icon there. Because that will show you all the slides that you created in Smart Notebook. Right, so you want to see all the PowerPoint slides that you created, kind of very similarly. But the one I want to show you is the one just below it. It's, it's a little, it looks like a picture, a frame picture. And within there, within there, we've got the gallery here. So we've got the what we call the gallery essentials. And, and, and the two parts that I, I do want to address are, are the gallery essentials and the lesson activity toolkit. This is where all the magic is going to lie in uh, for your for your uh, content uh, builder when you're building uh, smart board lessons. So we've already seen Smart Exchange, and we can get lessons. But now we're thinking, okay, I can't find a lesson for this on the Smart Exchange, or I don't like the lesson that's on the Smart Exchange for this. So I'm going to now start creating my own <laughs> stuff. So to find stuff, you go into the uh, the contents gallery. You click on that icon. But what you have the ability to do, right, it, like, if you notice here, when we click on that, and if you're downloading the software on your home computer, it will ask you, do you want to download the entire gallery? I advise you to download the entire gallery. It will take longer to download, but you will not be losing out on all the um, images in the gallery as well. right? Because how do you know that the gallery images you want aren't in the part that you don't download? Right, so it'll download what it, the program fields are in, in are valuable for just having the basic tools. But what if there are tools that are there on the extended version of the gallery? So if you notice here, look at all the the, the number of pictures we have. We've got about oh, well over 5,000 images that have already been that are part of the smart gallery that you can in, incorporate. Right? Remember how I drew that one cent? Um, image and thinking, well, why not get the one cent image that's already in here? Uh, there are what we call interactive multimedia. There's 392 activities that are um, visually engaging. So they almost animate, they do some kind of work, let's say. So it's not just a static image on the screen. So those are the two things that I'm going to point out to you. And again, you can always play around with some of the backgrounds and notebook files and pages. But we're going to bring up the pictures. Now, here, let me, let me just click on the pictures. Here are all the pictures that are within the gallery. Numbers, images, right? There are some numbers and images actually that actually have sound to them. So it all depends on what, um, what kind of image you're looking for. But now, there's so many things for us to look at. So how am I going to... Um, let's say, change that, the, the, the amount of it. So what you might want to do is, in the, um, in the search here, type the keyword that you're looking for. So I'm looking for money. Instead of going through 5,000 images to find money, let me type in the word money in the keyword, and let me kind of fine-tune my search. So I'm filtering my search based on the keyword that I'm looking for. And that happens to be money. So notice here now the number of pictures that are available. Remember how there was 5,190 something? Now there's only 104 pictures here that are relating to money. So it's a little bit easier for me to, to sift through. So I'm going to click on that. On the images, look at that. I've got the penny. Odds are I'll probably pick the back of the penny as opposed to the front. Right, so let's say I'm going to do, do a money activity. I'm going to bring the penny in here. I'm going to bring the nickel in here. I'm going to bring the dime. We got the dime, we got the quarter, we got the loony, and let's get the tuning. So now, we don't need the gallery anymore, so we're just going to click on 
the image above to get rid of the, 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 the gallery so we just see the images. So here, and I might kind of arrange them a little bit better. So what I might do is I might shrink these images just a little bit so I can fit them all on the same screen. So now we're kind of building our lesson. <coughs> slowly building our lesson. We are we're building our lesson. So all of a sudden now, here's the question. The question is going to be, uh, I'm going to call someone up and say, okay, I want you to make that question I said earlier. Uh, I want you to put together a dollar for me three. So the student's going to go up there, okay, here's my dollar. And then I'm going to go, okay, well, I'm going to do 20. And I'm like thinking, but wait, I don't have enough change here, right? So what is a tool that we've learned already earlier today that I can incorporate for this to allow me to have all this the infinite clone are exactly. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to infinitely clone each one of these objects. So now when I um, when I move them over when I move them over, they're still there. So what I could do, I'm going to undo it. So all of a sudden, what I'm going to do is, I might break up, and actually, you know what, instead of drawing it freehand, I'm going to draw a line using... And now, I'm going to pose the question. Right, so I'm not going to do it freehand, I can just do a straight line. So it's a little bit neater. For, the, for, my, for my students to, to see. And I'm going to call each student, I'm going to call maybe three random students up, and I'm going to pose the one question. I want you to show me a dollar twenty-three. So a student's going to come up, and they're going to do the dollar, oops, I still have that teacher. I need the pointer. The reason why I did that is because it's still in the pen tool. I want to make sure that I'm back on the pointer at all times in order to do that. So let me get rid of this line, right? Anything you want to get rid of, if you click on it, bring the uh, drop-down menu, you can know, always delete that way. So I'm on the pointer tool, so I go, okay, here's my dollar, 20, 3. So I've got the one student. So now I call someone else up. I want you to show me the same thing now, but without the loony, without starting with the loony, let's say. So all of a sudden, okay, uh, I know I can you know, start off with four quarters. And then I go, oh, well, I can do, I can do a bunch of nickels, right? And go, okay, so that's 10, 20, 20 three. And maybe even talk about which one do we have no choice but to use, that we have to use. Right? And so do that when you're, you know, maybe when you get your third student up here and go, okay, which of the, uh, uh, which of the currencies have we had to always use that we had no choice but to use it? Right now we can always talk about the whole idea of now delete, you know, making, um, getting rid of the penny, right, in our currency no longer. And so all of a sudden now we can kind of bridge that gap with something that's going on um, with, with our government and wanting to kind of get rid of the penny. I want to know if we get rid of the penny, how do you see this being maybe a benefit? How do you see it as being maybe, uh, you know, a, uh, a drawback? Thought of, oh, well now if something costs it $1.23 now, are they going to go to charging it $1.25 and profiting? Because in the end, yeah, the penny still exists, but it won't exist as a currency. But when you get paid, it'll still be, you know, paid in that, you know, that same way. But will, you'll be paid in that same way, but will the change that you get you know, from the grocery store reflect that. Right, so these are things that I guess you can kind of use as discussion. But now, here is the thing. I've created the, the slide and now I want to do that again. Right? But now, my next slide, 
what do I have to do now? Do I bring these coins back? Well, I could do that, but it takes so much time. One thing I might have wanted to do uh, beforehand was when I created these, right, when I created these, I might want to, right, so remember how we, we said, uh, always observe what does the drop-down menu do, right? We have, we've seen the drop-down menu when we put something on the screen, right, what it does. Right here I can, I can slowly delete, let's say, all these points. But what does the drop-down menu do when I'm looking at one of the individual slides? So what I have the ability to do is, let's say, create my lesson of just infinitely cloned coins. Right? And what I can do is, why do I have to recreate it all the time? I can just create it once and then go clone the page and keep cloning the page until I have 20 pages that are exactly the same with the coins already infinitely cloned and it just blank. I could have the questions already written out ahead of time, the amount that I want per, per, uh, per slide. That's it. But that whole idea of infinitely cloning, do I have to do it for 25 slides? No. You do it for one slide. You do it well for one slide, and then you just clone the slide itself. Right? But of course, I would have wanted to do this before I did all this. Right? See? So these are some of the things that as you're working on it, right, you're going to realize, wait up. Do I really want to have to sort these points out and delete them right now that I'm doing it? Right? So if you're going to do an activity like this, So here it is, my good copy, my good page, all infinitely cloned. Select the slide, right, and I'm going to clone the page. So now I've got two pages that will allow me to see. And there's my lesson. I've got a whole bunch of them. I can put maybe one, you know, uh, an actual dollar value in each one. So here's the page. I'm going to go with that. This one's going to be, you know, the dollar. say I want 95 cents <coughs> plus you. Right, so I can do that for all you know, for, for each one of the slides that I've created. Does yeah. that recognize you know you get like you can can you make it into a font? Is the same word? So I haven't tried it with money. So let's see. There you go. Recognize. There you go. So one of the things that was great is whenever I come across a question I haven't been questioned, right? Let's try it out. So if you want to see if something does, let's try it out. Let's try it out and let's see. I did that once in a session. They asked if it was going to recognize French. So we tried to put a French word. I, I clicked one of the wrong features and it turned everything in, in French. So it, like even up here, like my file, edit, that was all in French. Thank goodness there were two French students who were able to kind of at least help us. But I had to figure out on my uh, on my own like where the tools were to, to, to get back to it. So there are a few things you might want to be careful with when you're experimenting. That's one of them. Um, but but there it is. But I knew I wasn't going to be worried about that. If you're going to ask me to put it in French, then I would probably be a little hesitant. But again, yeah, this amounts. You know, we we can write it down, make it a little bigger, move it wherever you want. But I, I would advise creating your template and then putting in the amounts later. Let's say, or just put them on the fly. Put them on the fly. Let's see what I can 
So yeah, so what you would do is you create exactly. Exactly. You could always leave one and not write on it. And not write on it. No, yeah, exactly. But again, if, but again, when you're if what you're gonna do, what you might want to do is when you create your lesson. So you might create this lesson and go, okay, this is gonna be making change. Right? So you're gonna name it. Let's say making change. But then let's say if you're going to do a lesson and you're going to have a student, individual student come up. So I'm going to go, okay, let me, let me clone this page. So I'm going to clone the page and I'm going to say I'm going to bring a student up. So I'm bringing so-and-so up. Uh, you know, little Mark. Mark's going to come up and he's going to show me 95 cents. So I'm going to have him actually write down his name. He's going to sign it. He's going to sign the page. And maybe I might hit the recorder and have him explain. Or, instead of recording it, I might just save the work and go, okay, here's Mark kind of doing it and go, okay, I think I need a quarter. Mm, that's how much, uh, that's 25 points. And so you've seen, if, let's say, if I'm going to record it, it's probably, but let's say he doesn't, if we, do, if we don't do the recording, you go, okay, that's 60, 70, and he decides to do that. He puts up 75 instead of 95. Ask him, you know, are you sure about that? Yeah. So he sits down. When you save the work, now you're saving. This is Mark's work. He signed it. And now this is how you're going to, you can evaluate. And, and then show a parent, well, this is what I've asked him. You do have asked him. I wanted to show. So he's struggling with the ability to make change. Let's say. And here is a documentation of it. So just um, just a tool uh, here where yeah where um, even visually. But now when you're saving this, you want to save this as a different file because if you want to use this again next year, you open this file, all this stuff is going to be there. And so if you're going to reuse this lesson, which I'm hoping that yeah, of course you're going to create it once. You're not you don't want to create it just once. You're hoping to reuse it again. So you want to keep your blank copy for the one that you reuse year after year. And then the saved copy, the ones that you're doing individually per year. Okay, so that's, there's nothing wrong with having to, and I always, I have more than one file of the same document, but one will have, you know, the writings that we've done throughout the year, and I don't delete them until the end of the year. I'll delete them at the end of the year and work with my blank ones again for the next, for the start of the next year. Because I want to keep that, because what's going to happen is, when that student's going to ask, you know, or, or um, wants to kind of review something, I, I, I need to, you know, I didn't understand this stuff. So can we go over it? Can I see what I did or what we've done? And all the text that you've written, handwritten on here or students have written, you can go back to them at any time if you save the files. Right? But you always want to save it as a separate file, not save it as your original file. Because then you're going to be back there trying to erase every every slide the night before you are trying to present the lesson. And worst case scenario, you're thinking, yeah, lesson's done. You know, you come in, you hook up the computer, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my goodness, all the stuff from last year is, like, is here. So that's why you want to save two files. One blank one, and you're going to open the blank one. But when you're closing it, right, when I close this document, it's so going to close it, it's going to ask me to save. So I'm going to say, do I want to save the changes? You're going to click no, Right. We're going to click no, but we're going to cancel. You're going to click no, and what you're going to do is you're going to go in here, and you're going to want to save. You're going to want to save it as again. So right now I've got this, um, this file saved. as smart board, part one, basics, my key. So I might want to label it. Uh, you know, my smart board, you know, part one, you know, from St. Louis Catholic School. Right, so I kind of keep all the stuff in the during this in service. It's not responding yet. Oh, oh I think because it's it clicked the smart exchange. That's why. Yeah, in this corner is because of this, this, uh, this keyboard that's wanting to staying in the way of uh, so let's go back to the uh, smart exchange so that's a great way to kind of find things that you're looking for 
Now, let's go back to the gallery essentials. Again, if you look at the gallery essentials, find stuff for arts, uh, English language arts, geography, history, math, people and climate, uh, science, technology, special needs, sports, recreation. So within there, there are a bunch of photos. But if I just click on the gallery essentials, I'm going to have all the photos, all 5,000. But the minute I click on, let's say, the arts, now there are about 185 images within there. There are 17 interactive multimedia activities within there. Let's do here um, handwriting. I would say let's go lowercase. Any slide pictures here, right? So, so track get a student to practice their um, their penmanship. Come up. I can just put a whole bunch of them on the screen. Uh, so you've got the handwriting of the person. Please excuse the interruption. Ms. Villarosa, please contact the office. Ms. Villarosa, please contact the office. Thank you. So you've got uh, cursive letters with the, uh, the lines. Um, we've got numbers. If they want to practice uh, uppercase letters, uh, if they want to practice, and we've got the alphabet. Uh, here with the alphabet, Letters. So pictures regarding letters. Uh, some of them actually have some sound incorporated with them. I'm trying to find the ones that did. Oh, your sign. Um, where I, where, when, with the image, there was a sound that was incorporated with it. So what I could do is, I can actually bring in uh, a recording. Let me, uh, where you can kind of create uh, multimedia. So here's an example of, um, here we've got, uh, from Hamlet, just uh, a, a re we were able to find it, it was free, I'm trying to incorporate um, language. So what I could do with this is I could get a student to write out their a little short story, a little poem, open up Audacity and have them read the, um, their poem. But what I could do is then take that, that um, the sound of them reading the poem Where's a willow grows a slant of brook that shows his so hoary in the glassy stream. You know, someone else reading it, but I could always bring in the students' recording. There with fantastic garlands did she come, of crow flowers, meadows, daisies. So here's the poem, and we get the cocoa. student reading it, right? Record it. The liberal we'll shepherds give a ghostly name. Sound it. Or but our cold names get the recorder out and have them them. read it. Right, by getting yeah. the recorder, it's kind of like they're creating their own little house. For cornet weeds, right. Turn it onto a, a CD, give it, let the students, sound, give it to the students to, you know, show their parents. And then her weedy trophies and her self fell in the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide. And mermaid-like. So now, it's not only just that, but what if, what if we incorporate that bit of, of, of the, uh, of, of Hamlet, or let's take for example that poem that that student wrote, have them draw a picture, right? scan the picture, put it onto Smartboard, and then they're talking about the babbling brook. Get the sound effect. 
Why not get some music? And then why not throw in Again, you know, you can search right the the overall and search you know by clicking on gallery essentials and then searching through the five thousand photos. Or you know you know fine tune your search by typing in a keyword. Mm-hmm. Where are we talking about? 
Oh, and we'll just send you uh, a few things about when you're, when you're searching the web, so it's kind of like a help. Oh. Yeah. So here's a quick little uh, activity with uh, when you're dealing with the weather. You can get your calendar out and you infinite clone, let's say, you know, the, the weather forecast and say for today, you know, what, what kind of, you know, what do we have? And so today it's sunny. And tomorrow, what, you know, what, it might be raining. Uh, and again, notice how if we infinite clone the weather forecast again, you know, we can keep that there and just kind of bring a student to come up and just kind of drag, drag so it So you save that particular one and then <laughs> Thursday you can open up the same one and then just continue on it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So again, I just kind of whipped this up. Of course, you'd probably, you know, you plan it out, maybe write it um, a different font, size a little bit better than I did, put in the numbers, possibly. So just just to show you uh, just how quick uh, and, and simple it is. And again, how do I find the, the weather images? Yeah, you can type in weather. Just type in weather. So not sift through the 5,000 images, but actually go straight uh, to the point. Okay, so what I do want to point out is the Lesson Activity Toolkit uh, 2.0. And this is where I, um, I, I do want to point out uh, some a few great tools actually um, that you can use in the classroom. One of the tools here, right, is um, in the um, the lesson activity toolkit. Here, the very first one here is the balloon pop. And depending on how big your class is, um, I might uh, have um, the attendance done this way, right? So I type in their names. Um, so, so it, to, to edit the text there, I type in their name. And so now, when I'm in here, Thank you. 
close to five. Yes. So with with it, of course, um, yeah. Like I said, my window, my um, smart board 11 is acting up. But with it, what it would allow me to do is by clicking on it, it would allow it to pop. So it allows me to kind of kind of get the kids up. Um, again, depending on the grade level, eight or can care for that, or the novelty will wear out uh, very very quick, uh, or they'll kind of come up and start popping every once. Um, so. So you can use this. Actually, if you go to the Smart Exchange, there is one already been created for attendance. All you have to do is go in and pick the names. Upload the proper. Uh, now, um, depending on, um, let's say, the Smart Board, if you have, um, let's say, let's say, if you're going to have, let's say, primary level kids who cannot reach the higher parts of the board, uh, what you might want to do is with a tennis ball, get a tennis ball and put on a stick, and it can be used as a, as a as a touch tool. So you can have that there. So for a student who's trying to reach higher up on the board, um, if let's say you've got your board the lowest that it can go, uh, you give the you know, have them, you know, if they wanted to use it, just have the stick there available, don't <laughs> point it out and say, here, I think you need the stick, you know. So just have the stick there so they can just kind of grab it and utilize it. Yeah, that, those push balls, yeah, you can actually whip them at the, the board. They won't really break the board. And you can, yeah, depending on their aim, can, uh, but I would do that probably with questions, right, random questions. So if they threw it, and it'd be like whichever, so even if they had poor aim, they would still maybe pick at least a different question, right? So they throw it, and it picks the question, and that's the question you're working on. Next one that I want to show. Um, this blue vortex, one of my few favorites. Uh, here, um, with this vortex, what I'm going to do is I might be teaching, say, in a health stream, healthy and unhealthy foods. So, in all these labels here to the left, as you notice how it says healthy, I might have all healthy foods. So I might say strawberries, uh, tomatoes, um, let's say carrots, uh, let's say beans. Right, and over on this side, I'm going to have all healthy foods. So I'm going to say chocolate bar, let's say chips. Pop and uh, candy. So I'm going to select to rotate the vertices, but I might also want to put a password. Reason for that is uh, if a student ever, uh, you know, got a hold of that smart board lesson, they can go in and do this. So the chocolate bar, so the chocolate bar, pick healthy and change it, all your answers would say. Right, so we're going to rotate the vertice, the, the vortices, and we're going to click on OK. So here, here are all the words that we've created. So now you can bring a student to come up and go, OK, pop, what is it? So they're going to grab the word, and go, ah, I think it's healthy. And the word just gets that up. So they go, oh, OK, so it's not healthy, so it must be unhealthy. And then it kind of gets absorbed. 
uh, as I was showing earlier, I was showing nouns and verbs. Right? You get a bunch of nouns, a bunch of verbs, and create the vortices that way. And have students kind of just and they'll jumble them up themselves. And so it, it gets it notice you didn't have to really create anything, you just have to drag the vortices that you wanted, vortex that you wanted. And um, and they didn't much so if you come across the brown one, it does the same thing. It's just the color that the vortex is. So it's got multiple colors for it. So all you do is you pick it, find the vortex, and then drag it over it. And again, it's a fun little activity that students can kind of start going on with that. Oh, it's not. So let me put that in there. And I can reset it. Resetting it just kind of brings the words back out again. And now notice that the order of the words are all in a different order. So kids were remembering it based on memory. Right? So you can always have a student come up. Right? Um, student comes up and just says a review. Review your nouns and verbs. And just kind of you reset it. And then the words kind of jumble. So they're remembering them based on the order that, that you had them. By hitting the reset, it will change the order in which they're in. And just click on it, uh, edit. Notice that there are about six, there are 16 labels, so up, up to 16 words that you can create in that vortex. Another one, multiple choice. So put your question in here. <coughs> right, so you're going to put your question in here, put your answers, uh, and then select which one is going to be the right answer. So when a student um, comes up, they answer the question, and then they'll see if the answer is correct. Again, if, you had, if, if your school has the money, you could always go out and buy the clickers, where it allows you to kind of track um, their answers um, with, but I will show you guys a, a clicker, uh, a, an alternative to those clickers if you're if you're willing to allow students to bring in a, and this is more for grade seven and eight, uh, grade six, sevens and eights who maybe have a cell phone and they can bring that to class. But that's kind of separate from smartboard, not part of smartboard. But it, you can use it, incorporate it with this. I was mentioning about the uh, the activity, right? About doing, you know, let's say uh, a little short, you know, uh, five second, you know, ten second, quick little acti um, physical activity in class, right? The whole idea, you know, okay, with today we're going to do twenty jumping jacks, we're going to do ten push ups. So what you could do is you can actually put them in to the uh, into the the die here. So let's say twenty jumping jacks. Um, we're going to do, let's say, uh, five push-ups. We're going to do, let's say, ten sit-ups. Right. And today we're going to maybe, I don't know, run on the spot. And we'll call these ones free because they won't have anything to do. And so what you do is you select on a no repeat, meaning you can't repeat the... Uh, so what will happen is when you click on the die it will roll the die and actually see what activity. Oh, sorry, what we did was I, uh, I picked the die and it says the dice here, keyword. So I bring the keyword dice because the other ones have numbers on them. But here I can actually put something. So I, we can actually, you know, uh, use it to kind of do an activity. So here, so within here, I put in what are the keywords or key activities that I might want to do. Right, so you might think of, okay, a uh, fun thing we might do on Fridays. You know, every Friday we're going to do this. So put the five, the, the six things that you're going to do, let's say, um, maybe for the last 15 minutes of class, let's say, uh, and put them in there, no repeats, and then 
have them roll it, right? Point counting tax, I think. The other thing is, depending on, on what, how you're going to use the keyword, you also have the ability to extract what the keywords are right, after they're used. So, uh, so again, depending on what the activity and how you see this being useful, let's say, in your class. Right? You're showing you some of the tools and see the kind of create the magic behind uh, behind the tools. Okay, you're showing this earlier. Julia here. Um, question flipper and what I would do with this is this is how I would probably create my Jeopardy game. I would put in maybe the question, let's say, what is 3 times 7? And on the back, let's say reveal the answer and click on OK. Right, so I'll have one like that, maybe I'll have another, I'll bring in another one. And then bring it like a whole bunch of them onto the page. Again, this takes a little finesse to kind of arrange them in order. But again, bring a student up, they pick the question and go, okay, you're going to pick a question and answer it. So what is, you know, and reveal the answer. When, uh, when using, when doing group work, I always I use this one. This activity I don't like. Uh, one of the things I, I was one of those the shy ones in class where I, I was the one who kind of just sat behind and whoever was left over and that's what group I would be part of. So um, you know I didn't like that because you know people when people knew, know one another. So by using something like this, this group um, generator. Um, the groups always change, and now you kind of force, right? I, I think about it at in services when, when you're told, okay, uh, you know, join in a group of three or four, you typically stay with, you know, people from your school, let's say, if you're there, and, you know, because you don't want to mingle. And so with this, I might have, um, I might have the names. So Mike, Dave, Cindy. Tracy. Right, so I'll put a whole, I'll put a bunch of names. Um, so, right, so I'll put a bunch of names here, and I'm going to say, okay, I want groups of, let's say, groups of three, and I'll have, let's say, my entire class already set up. Click on generate, and there are the groups. Okay, so for this activity, those are the groups. Right then, maybe a month later for the next group assignment, right? Generate a new group. So you're forcing the students to work with different people along throughout the year, and you're not worrying about trying to track who's working. You're letting this track it for you. If students happen to work together, they happen to work together. But at least it, you know that's you know it's not in the in the students' hands. It's in this uh, generator's hands. And again, if you want, depending on uh, if you do have um, their uh, their images, like if you have a photo of them, you can always um, use this one when it lets me load it up. You find there if you ever took their photos, throw their photos in here and, and do the same thing instead of names. Again, a little more work with this one because you've got to now take those pictures and then bring them in there. But again, it could be uh, it could be fun. Uh, depending on how, um, how you use it. Can I 
says like blue multiple choice, brown multiple choice. It's just the color. It's just the color, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next one, uh, similar to, to the lines of, of this one. Another one I, I like to use when it comes to uh, presentations, I'm trying to get volunteers. I'm trying to get volunteers to, uh, to, to present. We don't wait for students to volunteer. Of course, if they do, then I'll let them, you know, of course. But here, okay, so here all of a sudden, let's say that's my class. And what I'm going to do, no repeats, because I don't want uh, the same group. Let's say, oh, because I picked the right number, number of names. So however many students are in your class, here I've got six. So, so there, there's my, my first presenter. So they get up and they do their presentation. Next. Right. So, great way, and, and again, it, it turns it, it's amazing because I find the kids just, it, they, put, they get put at ease a little bit in, in a sense because it's like, yes, they, they get nervous because it's the game, but they're like, well, it's not in my hands, and it's not my teacher picking me to go over and present. Now it's in the hands of the, and every kid's thinking, it's me next, it's me next, when their name gets picked, it's like, I knew it, I was the one who was, who was going to go next. If you're playing any trivia games in class and separating the class, let's say, you know, I'm thinking of the room and how the room is broken down to the left side, right side, use it to, to take score. Use it to take score with the scorekeeper, the scoreboard. So you can change the intervals instead of it being by one point, you can have it by five points, five points for every question. And, and pretty much with, with a lot of these, what I would do is maybe keep this as a file for classroom management, as a classroom <laughs> management thing, where I've got, you know, my, my class list written out for, as a word chooser. Um, Right? And that allows me to pick their names. Uh, I'll put it also in the in the names where I'm picking the groups that way. So when I'm wanting to pick the groups, that's you know that's the file that I'm opening up. Let's say to do it. Right. Of course, I wouldn't want to. I don't. I don't want to do it many times every single time. Okay. So at the beginning of the year, I type my name, the na my class names into the random word chooser and in the group chooser, and then I save them and I use them on a need to use basis. Like Um, and then, sorry, yeah. the random board chooser, yeah. let's say, okay, Mike's going to go and present his project today. Mm -hmm. If I turn the computer off and I, I decide to have to save it, if I go back to it the next day, will it remember? It, it will it remember? Actually, that's a good question. I'm, I have no idea if it's going to, um, if it's going to save. Let's, uh, um, let's, let's do it again. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's save changes. So we'll save changes, and what we'll do is we'll reopen it, the file, and see if that uh, if that file actually remains as is. That's a good point. Because yeah, not all, always are you going to get through everyone.
question. Okay, the scoreboard didn't save. Now the other thing is when, when uh, technology is going to act be slow or if, if let's say the internet's off, don't let that discourage you from wanting to use the technology. Just bear with it that you're you're going to have situations where the wireless, you know, the the, the internet will be down. As you notice, know, I don't know, uh, you experienced the email problem that we had uh, maybe about a month ago, where you couldn't access your email for a couple of days, uh, which was actually sweet for <laughs> for that little bit. Um, because I was worried that there was going to be a, a bunch of emails that I was going to get and have to deal with them after two, three days. But if I couldn't read them, that meant that no one was able to write them. So, <laughs> so that was the only thing that was great. Uh, so don't let that uh, discourage you from using it. Okay. Learn from it and, and, and also use it as a teaching tool with your students. That it's going to be, it's going to have its moments, right? And let them know, yeah, inner, you know, the technology is not the be all and end all. Yeah, there it is. So it, it did. You did see it. it did. Uh, so it's not the be all and end all. And just know that it is. And I got one thing I noticed is that a lot of times when I'm trying to show a student one on one, I find that that's when things happen to work the slowest. Right? So just kind of go with it and and have. I guess your plan B. For us, it's a little tougher to have a plan B. We don't have a smart board. We don't, it's, yeah, we can't really run the session, let's say. So it's a little bit tougher. But it, again, if we're using um, a YouTube video, or we'll, we'll download the video ahead of time. So we won't need to worry about YouTube. So if YouTube's down, if the internet's down, we'll at least have the video downloaded already ahead of time. So if we're going to show something. Because sometimes we'll show a video from YouTube in a session. We're not showing my stuff, we're showing something that involves the session, let's say. And so I guess, again, have your plan B um, for situations like that. And again, if you can't get the projector, just have the laptop out and generate the names. Have a, a class witness come up to the computer to, to kind of maybe click on it and say, okay, you're going to pick, pick the name. And you're going to generate the next name and just hit the enter. Again, you don't need to set up the projector, let's say, if you're just going to do a task as generating the names. But again, if you're going to have the board out, why not? Uh, I'll show you last one. Here's a frog. And this now, this one we're talking about the, the interactive <laughs> multimedia. Interactive multimedia. So what we've got here, we've got frog guts, which allows us to actually do uh, an actual dissection um, in class. Uh, press the pin button. So we get a student up here, of course. I want to be the one playing all the time. 
the most fine the kids can now start you know, dozing off. So again, here's a great way to kind of incorporate uh, you know, multimedia uh, actually, right? Because it's it, they're they're seeing it's animated. Scalpel out. show you um got the respiratory system breathing and respiration so we've got to put the parts in and then we and then studio like would would label them right? so if you if you just kind of touch them it'll kind of give you the um what the part is so let's say you pick the part putting the parts together just randomly start putting things in correctly and then you click on resuscitate oh. so again student got, did it incorrectly right so we'll reset it and then bring another student up here to <coughs> do the activity and when it does you know its eyes are open and, and so again, where do I find all the cool stuff like that are animated, that these are flash based? Right? This is under the interactive and multimedia. So now, and it all depends, like for some activities, yeah, there might be something, there might not be for yours. Right? So find, I guess, your keyword that you're looking for, put it in here, and type it out, see is there something interactive that you can actually utilize. If there isn't, then you know, find something else. Uh, a few things I do want to, now as I wrap up, 